A well-written method section builds trust and increases the, your chance of your paper getting accepted. Hi, this is Dr. Jia. Today, I'm going to talk about why the method section is so important, how to do it well, and to do it fast. Be sure to stick around to the end to get the bonus tips as well. So what is the method section? The method section is where you describe the study design and how you carry out your research project. Before we get into the how and what to include in the method section, I'm going to talk about something most people don't think about, that is, who actually reads the method section. There are three audiences who read the method section in detail. The first group, reviewers. The second group are the researchers. And the third group are the clinicians. Knowing your audience allows you to think about what to include in your method section. The first group, reviewers. They look at your method section to decide if your study findings are valid or can be trusted. If you think about this, they are putting so much trust in your data collection and how you actually carry out your research project. So you do have to give them enough information so that they can say, hmm, I think the authors know what they're doing. And if you give them vague methods, they will start questioning the validity of your study findings. The second audience is the researcher. That happens after the paper has been published. So they typically read the method section in detail for three things. To use your study method for their own research. Number two, to compare data. And number three, to combine data. First one, to use. They read your whole section in detail so that they can see which part they want to replicate in their own research study, which part they want to learn from it. The second reason, they want to compare their data. And in order to decide if they can even cite your paper and whether the results are comparable, they need to look at the method section to see, look at the inclusion, exclusion criteria, and the statistical methods to see if, if your results can be compared with theirs or not. Then the third reason is to combine data. So this is applied when you're thinking about systematic reviews, scoping reviews, and meta-analysis. And so when other researchers are pulling other literature or other research papers, they look into the method section of other papers to decide whether they can include your research paper into the systematic review. Then now the third group, the clinicians. Here, they read the methods not so much to replicate the study, but to see if they can apply the study findings to their own patients. For example, they pay a lot of attention on the setting. Is it inpatient? Is it outpatient? They also pay a lot of attention to the outcomes, whether or not the outcome are clinically meaningful to them or their patients. So whenever you feel stuck about what information you want to include in your method section, think about your audience. That will guide you easily. So how do you do it then? You want to build trust by giving enough information on the who, what, how, address potential concerns, and justify your methods. Now, I'm gonna break it down for you, so all you need to do is to include the following information in your research paper. First, the what. Here, think about your study design. And make sure your study design is the right method to answer your study question. So this is where you talk about the whether it's a cross-sectional study, is it a randomized controlled trial, is it a retrospective cohort study, a survey study. Then the next thing is the setting. Is it inpatient, is it outpatient, what type of clinic it is? Is it community? Then the who. What's your inclusion and exclusion criteria? Then you want to talk about the how. How you get the information, how you carry out your research study, and how you analyze your data. So the first one is data source. How did you get your data? Is it through a registry, electronic health records, or you're conducting primary data collection, such as you're recruiting patient, you're giving survey, you're collecting blood samples. The next subheading, definition and measurement. I like to think about this section as like the glossary of terms. In the definition, you want to define the terms so that the readers know exactly what you're talking about. This includes how you define the medical condition, the outcomes, the exposure or intervention, and the covariates. Measurements are instruments or tools you use to measure your data. For example, Maybe a blood pressure cuff, which one you use? If it's a survey study, which survey? Is it a validator tool? Let's say you are doing daily weights for patient with heart failure. What scale did you use? Then the next subheading, the statistical analysis. Here you think about your power calculation and your sample size. What statistical tests you use to analyze the descriptive data 
and what statistical tests you use to analyze your inferential statistics. For example, how you adjust, how did you match, what type of subgroup analysis you did. Then you want to address potential concerns. What plan you had in place to make sure you are able to recruit patients and to complete follow-up. And in terms of data, how did you manage missing data? Did you do a sensitivity analysis? Did you use specific methods to handle that? Be sure to put a sentence on what statistical software you use in your statistical analysis. In a separate paragraph, put a short paragraph on the ethics approval or approval from the Institutional Review Board. And one sentence on whether or not you took informed consent. I know conducting research is a very complex process, so I made an idea to paper blueprint for you. This blueprint takes you through a seven-step process from idea generation to paper submission. Be sure to get a copy by clicking on the link below. Here are some additional tips you want to think about when you write your research paper. First, use past tense. Second, details are your friend. Be sure to look at the author guideline so that you know exactly what else to include in your method section. If you have written your research protocol, that will be the easiest because all you need to do is to copy the method section of your research protocol into your method section. And one final point is the references. How do you decide which part of the method section needs to be referenced or cited? As a rule of thumb, established methods should be cited and new methods needs to be clearly described and briefly justified. So that means you will need to put references if you're citing previous methods, previous statistical studies, using special statistical tests, or validated study instruments. The method section is only a part of the research paper, so watch out for videos where I'll guide you on how to write the other parts of the paper well. I'll see you in the next video.